cycles of IUI intercepted with diagnostic macroscopy still hasn't helped the couple achieve a pregnancy, then the next step is IVF. So frankly, when we're looking at this group of unexplained fertility who haven't conceived, then the first step is IUI with four to six cycles and then follow it with IVF. Usually with IUI and IVF, the success rate for this group of people is very good. In IVF, the other questions which are not answered by IUI are detected. Like in IUI, what we are attempting to do is making sure that you're ovulating and you're ovulating uh, more than one point each time. Second, we are making sure that the sperm that we are inseminating is of a better quality and it also it has very little distance to travel and meet the egg to create fertilization and to create the embryo. Now, with IVF, what tends to happen is not only are we ensuring fertilization, which sometimes IUI we cannot detect. The second thing also is we be able to assess the quality of the embryo that is resulting with the fertilization, which IUI doesn't give us the information about. So in IVF, the extra step that is required is obviously, we give them medications for a slightly longer period of time than with IUI. We give them injections that last till about 10 to 12 days. The goal is still the same as many follicles and as many eggs that they can produce within the range of safety. Now, it's very easy to go overboard and cause a condition called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which can be a risk for the patient. So we have to be very cautious in the amount of medication that we're giving them. Yes, good number of eggs is important, but not at the cost of safety. So ovarian reserve tests would enable us to detect how much of medication should be given to this group of people. Now, once the eggs are retrieved through a surgical procedure, which does not involve any cuts in your tummy, it just involves a needle that goes from the vagina into the ovary through the vaginal route, and we retrieve all these eggs. Now, these eggs are then fertilized with the husband's sperm. Now, whether we should be doing IVF or whether we should be doing ICSI is something that the doctor will be uh, discussing with you based on the sperm parameters. Now, once the fertilization occurs, we tend to observe the growth of the embryo. This is from day zero, from the time that the eggs are retrieved, right up to the blastocyst stage. And during the growth of the embryos, we have detailed discussions regarding how the embryos are growing and which day should they be transferred and how many should be transferred. Usually, when you're looking at the success rate for this group of people with IVF or ICSI, the success range is somewhere between 35 to 40 percent. Then comes the question about, like we said, how many embryos to put back and the quality of the embryos. We have to be very careful in uh, deciding the number of embryos because we also have to educate the patients about the risks of multiple pregnancy and the um, course of the pregnancy when you have more than one pregnancy. But in summary, what we would like to say is when it comes to unexplained infertility, even though it's a frustrating condition, there are treatment options. And these treatment options give us very good success rates. So please be sure to speak to your doctor about the options and what are your success rates based on your reports, your age and all the other parameters. But this always hope at the end. Thank you.